Right, guys, welcome back to episode 11 of the Tackle Room. We've got another very special guest today in the Trent Rivers legend, Wayne Swinsco. How are we doing, Wayne? Good, mate, thanks. So, Wayne, obviously, um, we've got Riverfest final coming up uh, this weekend uh, at the Burton Joy stretch. One of the main things Dave Harrell said to me the past couple of weeks is it wouldn't be possible without you to obviously have the final on this section. What what do you think of that? Well, I don't think that's totally correct, but it's, it's lent on me when we start when this project moved to uh, the Ashfield Angling Club waters at uh, Burton Joyce because I, I fished it for obviously 50 years. So I know a little bit about it. Um, Obviously, the river's changed dramatically in that space of time. Yeah. Um, it's gone from really in the sort of early 70s, it wants a good, and then we had a we lost the we lost the power stations early on in that uh, 70s, and the water changed, and we suddenly went to catching loads of chub and roach, and then and obviously a few barbels started to show, and then the middle of the 80s, it uh, started to decline um river went very clear um basically i think the you know the river authorities changed their strategy they didn't start putting so much uh surge in as they used to and things like that and it declined for a long time in actual fact i never thought i'd see it come back again but over the last 10 years it's uh, made a massive improvement again yeah um River's very clear. We've got all sorts of fish that live in it now. And it don't get the pressure it used to get, but it's still really good fishing at the minute. Yeah. Do, do you do you think, obviously, uh, the Ashfield Angling Centre stretch, do you think it is probably one of the best venues in the country for the final? Yeah, I think it offers something for everybody. That's one of the, the main things. It's centralised as well. We're not... You know, obviously, people have got to travel distances to get there. But, you know, when it's sort of like way down south or in Wales, it's like, you know, and it's a bit specialised when it was on the Y. I think since it's moved, a lot of people have got a bit more interested in it. Yeah. And it does offer it does offer loads of different types of fishing, you know. That's it. And I think one of the things that I'll take from it, I did an interview last year. Well, it was just at the start of this year with Lee Edwards, obviously, before the ticket release. Um, and he obviously travels all the way from Wales, and he said yeah. he said himself that he loves coming to the Trent, even though he's that far away. Yeah, it is always a joy to come and fish. Obviously, anywhere on the Trent. Yeah, well, Burton Joyce has always been really the mecca of the mecca of the Trent. You know, yeah. Most of the matches are held there, and it's been the best fishing over the years. Obviously, people will argue against that and say there's some better fishing here and there, but. Consistently, it has always been the best stretch from sort of Gunthorpe Weir to Stoke Weir. Yeah. Slight, maybe slightly above. I mean, there's some good stretches in Nottingham, but you don't get many matches on there. I mean, we used to get all the proper big matches either at Newark end of the river, which was good, but Burton Joyce was so consistent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Just want to drop on, Wayne. Obviously, you said before you've got sort of a lot of experience on the trend. Um, have you got any sort of memorable moments from the sections that we've got the final on? Yeah, yeah. Um, we used to fish a lot of Saturday matches there and Sunday matches. I've won quite a few of them and that. Um, I did enjoy the River Fest a couple of years ago and uh, the first match I, I drew two pegs below the out four, which is a great area. Yeah. I had a lovely day fishing, catching 28 pound a roach. I think I was second on the day to uh, Paul Cannon. And it was just a lovely day fishing in horrible conditions, really. It rained most of the day and blew a hula. Yeah. But uh, it fished well, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and going, obviously, looking back at last year's final on the first day, Lee Edwards' weight, was it just was it just under £80, was it, a barbel? I think yeah, you had? It's, um, yeah, it's a fantastic peg. It don't always produce... But it's probably the only consistent barbel peg at Burton Joyce. Yeah. There's yeah. a few, there's a lot of barbel here, there, and everywhere. But that peg, for some strange reason, over the years has always remained the same. It used to be called the 
um, what one eight permanent peg one eight seven. If you've got a you know a reputation for producing, not just barbel, but as the stages of the river went, even in the days of when there weren't no chub and barbel, there it was good roach. Well, not yeah. so much roach, but it was a good dace peg. And there was a lot of gudgeon there. And then it moved on when the dates and the gudgeon sort of went and the chub come. It was a good chub peg. Yeah. There's still a few chub on it, but the real big fish. And uh, the barbel have been there since, you know, when they first started to show at Burton Joyce, when they were small, there's, they've always been there since. And now some of the fish that catch there, like 13, 14, 15 pound, they, they are wow. really big fish. Wow. It's an odd, it's not an odd peg to fish because the fish are close, but it's a, uh, an odd peg to get in and fish because you the, the banks are receding with the water, you know, the pressure of the water. Yeah. Um, and you have to wade out to some, onto some rocks, and it's not very nice to the pleasure fishing in there. It's it's hard to get in and out, to be honest. That's it. But it's That's worth it. putting it in in a match because it's offers somebody a good, real good day's fishing. That's it. That's it. So what we'll do now, Wayne, obviously we just talked about one of the pegs there. We'll just go through the sections. Obviously, we've got zone A and zone B, which yeah. obviously a, the finalists will fish one on one day, one on the other. Um, so we'll go on zone A first. So we've got the, uh, the ferry field and the road stretch. What what are we expecting there, way? Well, the ferry field, there'll be 24 pegs in the ferry field. Peg one at the top is right as near as the weir you can get. The weir's still a couple of hundred yards away. And then first couple of pegs, I'm fishing quite regularly because it's, you can park behind them and you don't get any problems with the cows because it's like got a cattle grid so they can't get on it. So yeah. I often nip there. And I also have a great day's fishing. But since we put them in in matches, it's not, it's not been that good. They're good, but they're not good enough really for some reason. But... A couple of years ago, uh, Nick West had 30-odd pound of dates there on the feeder. And this year, Dave Bins was on peg three or four, I believe, and he's had 30 pounds. So there's a big shoal of dates up there. Yeah. Um, but I think they get moved about a bit with the cormorants, to be honest with you. And they can show up anywhere on them first four pegs. It's also They're also good float pegs as well, You're not just feeder pegs. There's a few barbell up there as well, but... They tend to get fish for at night, the barbel, and you don't tend yeah. to see many in the day. Strange. Yeah. And as you come down the, the um, ferry field into like the sort of the, the water slows a bit, but they can catch you can catch a lot of fish on the pole there. Not so many fish on the feeder, and yeah. then it goes down onto the straight, which will be around about eight, nine, or ten. And the, the flow picks up again. And there's been one or two weights here. Charlie Gooch had a, a good weight where he caught some chub and. Um, Martin Challenger had a good weight on chop worm there. Uh, and it starts to swing around the bend, which is normally about 14 and 15. And there's some bushes on the far bank at Shelford. Yeah. Easily, easily, you know, got there with a the feeder with the tackle we've got now. And there's a lot of chub over there. Um, I think last year, the second day, there was quite a few chub caught fishing maggot feeder right across. Yeah. You don't have to go right, right across, or she'll get stuck in the, the you know, especially with the river being clear, but sort of six or eight yards off the far bank. Or, yeah. You know, it's probably 50, 60 metre cast, but there's a lot of chub there of all different sizes and a few barbel. Yeah. Once you come off that bend, you, stick, you seem to lose the flow, and, and I don't really like pegging the next few pegs. If I do peg them, they'll be well stretched out, so everybody's got a lot of room, but... You can catch roach and dace there um, and perch, um, but they're not as good as the pegs. As you go further down, which will be the last three or four pegs on of the 24, yeah, the space begins to pick up again, and there's a lot of roach and dace there to be caught on the pole. Right. But also, there's a you don't see them, but there's one it gets a lot of attention from barbell anglers there, and they catch a load at night, but you never see them caught in the day. Yeah. Very strange, really. So somebody could take a chance who don't fancy, you know, fishing on the pole. They might catch some barbel. The odd chub there as well. But that's basically the last four pegs that produce some good weights, up to 25, 26 pound of roaching dates on them. Nice yeah. fishing. Obviously, then you move on to the, the second part of the A zone, which is a road stretch. There'll be 18 yeah. pegs on here. This offers a variety of fishing, really. The first sort of Pegs between the outfall and the pylons offer you a great roaching dace fishing. A lot of pike there can cause you problems as well. 
Yeah. Strange thing is, like a few in a few weeks' time, there'll be a lot of chub on them pegs, but you never seem to catch them in this river fest. Maybe now the weather's changing; it's getting a bit cooler quick. We might see an odd chub show there. Yeah. Um, that's basically 20, 27 peg down to um, 25 permanently pegs. Sorry, 20 pe- permanently pegs. Then you've got the famous 19 peg, which for some reason has, has just showed up this last few years as being a real good breed peg. It never really used to be in the past, but uh, it's produced a lot of breed. Obviously, John Locke won the uh, Riverfest on that peg, 19. It, it's like a peg where you have to sort of three quarters to just a bit further across. It's not a deep peg, it's probably only yeah. eight foot, but the bream seem to hole up there for some reason. Um, and either side of it don't seem to be so good. There's an odd bream below it, but above it, you come off what they call the stones on the other bank onto gravels, and they don't seem to be on that gravel, the bream. They seem to stop on that 19, maybe 18 peg, you get an odd one. It's a bit of a weird... You know, you've got to go for them, but uh, if they don't feed, you're in trouble. Yeah. And then the rest of the road stretch really is um, mostly pole fishing. There's some chop worm fish to be had in the weeds. Uh, surprisingly, there's the odd tench there as well in them weeds. But most of the time, you'd be catching perch. But um, casters and emp on the pole over a bit of ground bait will produce some decent weights. And if you can catch like, the good anglers will catch probably 20 pound in the odd pegs along there to do it right. Yeah, that takes you right down to the end of the road stretch. Where really, if any water came on or anything like that, I'd expect to see an odd bream show there. Yeah, at the minute, we haven't talked about it, but at the minute, the river is low and clear and really warm. But as we're talking now, we've had a lot of rain overnight in Nottingham, whether yep. it's been high up the country, you know, to Stoke, where. I was going to say, I think I think it is where I am. I'm obviously uh, Stafford, Stokeway, so yeah, yeah. We, we've had consistent rain throughout the night yeah. and the day. I, so yeah, I don't think it will do a lot of. Um, it won't put a lot of. It won't put any colour in the river. It might put a little bit of pace on, but the river's that low. Even if it comes up like six inches, it ain't going to be normal level. Yeah, and I don't think we forecast to have loads and loads, but it might. Cool. It might cool the river a bit, which might help it. It might not help it, you know. Yeah. But on them last few pegs on the uh, A zone, on the road stretch, I do think um, there could be an odd green court there. And there is an odd big bobble, but they are uh, good roach pegs. Lee, Lee Wright drew there last week and had a, he had a cracking weight, really, off that peg, 20 pounds. Yeah. And then, obviously, there's a bit of a gap in the pegging, which uh, never used to occur, but uh, there's a wood grown there in the last 50 years that uh, you can't get into, really. So, your next stop is um, B-Zone in top of the Nelson field, where we'll... Yeah. Uh, there's a very much peg that, you know, that hasn't produced for a long, long while. Paul Cannon was a little bit below that, and he when he won it, he had the first day 40-odd pounds. But it has produced some real big weights over the um, sort of, well, you know, even in its heyday in the 70s and 80s, there were bream there then, and it's produced some good weights. But uh, even since we've been fishing it, I mean, I think uh, Rob Parker had something like 90 odd pound on it one day in an open wow. match. So it's, yeah, it's got the potential. But there has been some good bream anglers on it. Um, the last few years, it just hasn't produced. You can see them topping, yeah. but it just hasn't produced. So any time, you can never tell at Burton Joyce, you can catch him on coloured water then, bream. you can catch him when it's gene clear. It's just the big fish, and I think that's the difference. They don't have to feed much. Most no. of the fish are like sort of five to eight to nine pound. Even We've even had double figure ones weighed in in matches. So, you know, they're probably at, uh, although the beautiful condition fish they're probably you know getting towards the end of their life cycle which they don't yeah. have to feed that much exactly obviously um going further down the nelson field after the first couple of pegs you get into a uh, start to get into a bit of a bend and um that's when you the pace picks up and you start to catch some roaching days there and there's also a lot of big perch close and it's deep under your feet yeah and you can fish like five or six joints and really attack it on chop worm and there's some quality perch up to three pound along there you might even get an odd chub big chub on it as well but uh, 
fishing out into the river, whether you fish pole or fish for dace on the feeder, there's a lot of dace through there as well. Yeah. And the water gets slightly deeper and slightly quicker as you get down the uh, down the Nelson Field. And there's a stone bridge uh, right on the bank. One, it's probably 10 or 12 foot deep there, but once you get past that, it starts to shallow up into what I call a bit of a corner. But it's never been, even in its heyday, it was never good. I'm going to, when I peg it out on Friday, I'm going to try and leave a couple of pegs out there. Yeah. And, and, and give everybody, I've got to put a couple in, but there's like three or four I don't really like. So I'm going to try and give them a bit more room there. Might encourage a few fish to feed. There's a few perch there, but they don't seem to be a big A, the roaching days. Um, yeah. 10 or 12 pounds, normally a real good weight there. Right. And then you get the next part of the Nelson field. Um, you start to go onto the rocks where the uh, bank's been worn away. Um, and you, you're coming towards the barbell peg. The, the, it astounds me that we never seem to catch a lot of dace and, and roach on them rocks. But there's pace there. Uh, most people end up fishing for barbell. But really, you might get one or two either side on a good day. But if it's a day where... You know, you're going to want 30, 40 pounds. They tend to stick in the same bit of an hole. You know, you yeah. don't look any different. It's snaggy. I think what happens to it, it comes out of that uh, bit of a deep corner and uh, just starts to shallow up a bit. And I just think it's a natural place for fish to hole out. Yeah. As I said before, it's been a good peg for various species of fish over the years. After the barbell peg, you don't have to fish far out on that barbell peg. A lot, a lot of people fish it too far out or too short. It can be snaggy short. Basically, you want to be fishing about sort of 16, 18 metres out. Yeah. There's two pylons where you sit there, you chuck downstream to the to the second pylon, which is about 20 yards looking at. It's about 20 yards down your peg and then tend to lose feed loads of empty and cast to be a catapult on that line. Yeah. And that seems to work well. And you can swap between feeder and straight lead with meat or bunches of maggots, bunches of casters, you know. Yeah. Some say there's some big chub there as well. After that, Tends to be the same sort of depth, seven, eight, nine foot. And they have been good uh, dace pegs in the past. But this year, up to now, there don't seem to be a lot of fish on them. Seven or eight, nine pound was a good weight there at the weekend, where years before, Sean Ashby and one or two have, have had sort of 16, 18 pound, which is nice, nice fishing on the pole. Yeah, exactly. So that takes you down to um, the end of the Nelson field. And then you start, then there's a gap in the allotments. And you start the uh, top of the rank, which can be on a Scott Horn drew it one day and the wind was perfect. And he fished uh, a long whip and alternated with a few other methods. And he he had 26 pound a day some, and a few roach off it. Um, not seen it produce that much since, but it's a, it's dependent on if there's much water in the river, really, because it. It's coming into some deep water and it's a bit steady. And as it as you drop further down the next few pegs in these bushes, um, they are good pegs. You can catch dace on the feeder, but there's a hell of a lot of big perch in them as well. And eels, yeah. there'll be a, whether the eels will show now. It's suddenly we've lost that. I mean, the last seven days we've had thirty degree heat. Today it's down to about eighteen degrees here in Nottingham, and it's a bit chillier. Whether then it'll knock them eels or what, I don't know. But yeah. Um, yeah. It still should be good fishing. The further you go down the rack, it tends to shallow up a little bit. Not a lot, but it shallows up to like sort of seven, eight, ten foot. And there'll be a lot of roach and days caught along there. Um, yeah. The pegging tends to be good there because there's not many sittings along that bit, so I tend to spread them out. As you come to what I call the bottom of the rack, where the stones end, um, there's normally six or eight pegs on the gravels. We've named them Cam's Gravels because all Cam use all seems to draw on there and take <laughs> 25, 25 pound. But it does shallow up on the gravel to about six or seven foot. Yeah. Um, there's probably six pegs there where you can put a good way to roach and dace together on the pole. It could probably be emp and casters on the pole. If you're good at emp fishing, it'll be you'll be good, you'll, you'll do well there. Yep. But you can catch loads of fish on casters, feeding heavily with casters over ground bait. And then the last few pegs, it goes round the bend onto some gravels and it shallows up to like three or four foot. They aren't the best uh, pole pegs. It's a bit shallow, but it can be really good on waggler, um, yeah. catching dace quickly on waggler, and especially if the quality dace. 
Um, but I'm expecting it to fish well. I mean, at Burton George, £25, always a decent, a good way. You yeah. know, last week, the top five or six had 20 odd pounds, one barbell weight, no bream. And I think it would probably be similar this week. If the bream or the barbell don't show, £20 or big doubles will be a good start over the two days. Yeah. The, the only thing that's going to change this year, um, looking at the forecast, the wind's going to be northeasterly. Now, the prevailing wind at Burton Joyce is southwesterly. Yeah. And that that helps you on the uh, ferry field and the road stretch, which is A section. Yeah. And it hinders you. If it's strong, it hinders you on B zone, which B. is Nelson Field and Rack. Yeah. So this year, it's going to be exactly the opposite to southwesterly. So it's going to help you on the rack and the bottom end of the Nelson. You're going to have it really favourable. Yeah. Whereas on the road stretch in the ferry field, you're probably going to have it upstream and in your face. That's and what right. happens is, it, if it gets much above 10 or 12 miles an hour, the, the river starts, to, as it pushes upstream, the river starts to roll. Yeah. And, and it does get a good roll on it as well. And uh, presentation on the float, becomes difficult then, especially if you're pinning your faith on um, hemp and things like that. So just be people need to be aware of that. It won't yeah. bother the feeder anglers. It will help the people on the bottom of Nelson Field, and um, they're right, they'll be able to present their bait brilliant. Yeah. So I'm expecting maybe that might be the, the place to draw it, that, uh, you know, catch a few more fish than normal, because it does, when it blows on, and it's southwest, it does India a bit on the the bottom of the rack in the Nelson Field. Yeah, that's it. Um, one thing, way, what do you reckon methods wise is going to dominate the weekend? Um, well, there's that many methods you can use at Burton Joyce. You could, you know, ground bait feeder could be good if there's a few for you bring about maggot feeder, and if there's a lot of dates about. But normally, looking at it, I think. The long pole will be the one. I mean, that pole fishing really has superseded stick float fishing on the trend because the way the fish feed now, all the, you know, all the fish come under your bait now. It's that clear. The fish are right under your bait, so it helps the poles. It's just deadly for presentation. Yeah. Um, so I would think casters and emp on the pole will be your go-to method. Now, there will be one or two people that's going to fish dace feeder. You've got to be in the right areas to make it work. It's not as good as it was probably four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, there was they gather themselves up a bit now, but it's hard to catch them big dates. If you can catch the ones like three to six ounce, you're gonna get a big weight. But there's a lot of areas now where the dates are a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, but I think pinning your faith in the right areas on long pole, I wouldn't say long. Fishing like 13 metres with ground bait to start with and loose feeding and and caster and deciding yeah. which way you want to go will be the key to it, I think. And I'm not saying you're, not saying you're going to win it doing that, but yeah. somebody might put £50 a barbell or bream on the scales and then you're up against two weights of £25, you know. Yeah, but exactly. um, it's a cracking competition to pay the top 15 out, so... You know, yeah, and and like like I'll just mention, obviously now Wayne, we've only sold sort of eighty four percent of the tickets this year, but like you've just said, then it still pays quite deep into it, and obviously, oh, I mean, I mean, you know, it's like it's the money's brilliant, but the prestige is even better, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. I've come to like I'm sort of, uh, I won't say I'm at the end of my career yet, but I'm getting there, and uh, I'd love to win it, but. I can't even qualify them. I find it that hard to qualify now. You know, it's just um, some people just go there once and they'll 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 qualify. But I've had probably ten goes this year, and I'm not. I don't think I've been given a chance to be honest. Um, I can't think of one. You know, but it has, that's fishing. You know, exactly. And we we've spoke to obviously uh, Fishermania champions and all the same. Matty Dawes this year's Fishermania champion. He, he said in his uh, interview. He must have had eighteen qualifiers before he yeah. got anywhere near qualifying again. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's like you said, it's it's taking your chance when you get it, isn't it, Wade? Yeah, I mean the serial qualifiers. I mean like Johnny Small, who's a brilliant angler on the Trent. We've been trying and we're talking about it. He hasn't qualified. James Robbins hasn't qualified. Yeah, you know, there's quite a few. Sean Ashby and I know Sean 
probably would have qualified, but he hadn't had many goes this year because of international commitments and things like that. But uh, it is, I mean, it sounds easy when you're at 20 pegs, but basically it's like winning a match, isn't it? Exactly. You know? And it's on the Trent, I only stick to the Trent. It's um, 20 pegs on the Trent is a bit diverse. You could have a bream peg, a barbel peg, roach pegs. You just don't know what you're going to yeah. think. It's like throw the kitchen sink in your car or van and decide what you're going to do when you get to your peg. Exactly. And that's, and what you... it'll, that's what it'll be for most competitors this weekend as yeah. well. That's what I was just about to say to you. Do you think it'll be the same for the final with the kitchen sink set up, obviously, this weekend? You've got to, mate, yeah. yeah. You've got to. And yeah. um, one of the last questions I'll ask you, ask you, Wayne, who do you, obviously, you know who's qualified, everything like that. Who are the anglers that you're looking at to obviously do it? Obviously not taking into sort of aspect the draw as an app and yet, anything like that, but who are your anglers to watch, really, over the weekend? There's so many, mate. To be honest with you, um, any 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 of them could win it. Actually, to be honest, because yeah. they're all that good, you know. Um, but there's people that's going to shine if they get the right draws. Cameron News will be good. Yeah. Um, obviously, Adrian Whittle. Yeah. There'll be a, there'll be quite a few, mate. But there's one I'd there's one I'd like to do well. He's had a great se- couple of seasons on the trend. It's a big mate of mine. Yeah, he, he doesn't seem to come off for him in, in finals, but he's on good form, and he has a knack. He has a knack of drawing a bring peg or two when the feed on the trend. That's Tony Barker. Yeah, um, he's been doing really well. He won last. He won last week on the trend. I up and uh, with some bream, and he's good. Or not, he's a good all rounder. But I, I hope he has a good go because, uh, as I say, normally on f- finals he hasn't had the rub of the green. Yeah, so he's one to watch, but. There's so many of them, man. Yeah. You know, Ian, Ian, Ian News, Darren yeah. Frost, them sort of people. Yeah. They, they, they're in form and they're catching a lot of fish on the other rivers to fish. So, yeah. It's going to be a great final. I'll be down, even though I ain't qualified, I'll be down there having a watch that day. Yeah. And but obviously, think, and obviously Lee's qualified again um, yeah, as well. So, yeah. It only, t- yeah. it only obviously Lee's, Lee's obviously accreditations talk for itself. Obviously, Welsh International. Oh yeah, mate. He's got, so he'll have much. a great. He'll have a great chance. You know, yeah. um, there's loads of them. Lee Wright. He'll be. He'll be up there. Yeah. You know, it's just if you can get, you don't need to win it. You need a, any match. You need a lot of luck. You need to draw well, and you need to fish well. Even to get in the top fifteen, you're going to have to draw two good pegs. You know, you ain't going to get in with a real good and then a bad one. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's, exactly. there's most pegs really Burton Joyce the way it's pegged you should be able to get somewhere approaching double figures every day yeah. but to get them 20-25 pounds you need to be in some good areas you know that's it that's it we'll, obviously we'll finish the Riverfest uh, talk there way but yeah. I, I've got two questions to ask you what I ask all of my guests so yeah the one I'll cater towards river anglers. What would you what would you say to any up and coming sort of river angler now? What bit of advice would you give them if they want to succeed? Obviously, whether it's to win River Fest, obviously compete in Division One, Division Two nationals and stuff like that. Well, basically, you've got to you know you've got to learn so many different methods coming on this river trend. It's phenomenal, you know. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it's not as bad as it used to be. We used to have to, like to, to learn how to fish wagglers and stick floats and all that in downstream winds. You, you you was on a five year apprenticeship. Now you get a lot of these young lads come along that just clip a rig on the end of a pole and they're away. That's they can, it. You know they've got all the tackle nowadays. You don't have to make anything like you used to do. And I'll just say go out and practice and fish different methods and get it. You know, get used to fishing them. That's it. That's it. And the last question, Wayne, I think I already know the answer to this one. Is there any angling trust competition that you'd love to win? Well, I'd love to win that one, River First, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think my time is over now, but you never know. You never know. I'll, give it, a, I'll give it a good crack again next year and uh, hopefully I'll qualify. Yeah, there's always... I think, the... I'd, I think I'd qualify easier fishing away from the trend, to be honest, because you had a bit more peggy venues and... Uh, if you draw a good peg in a bad bit, yeah, you've got a chance, you know. But I'm a bit too old now for travelling all over the country, so I'll just stick to uh, 
to what you know. qualifiers <laughs> on the trend and hopefully get to Cam Hughes or Sean Ashby to draw from it. Yeah, the exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly so we'll leave it there wayne um i'd just like to say to all the guys watching whether you're competing in river fest or not this weekend have a great weekend's fishing but to the guys in the final really good luck um and thanks for coming on wayne um hopefully we'll see you in the final next year and obviously yeah, see, you at, see you at the weekend yeah. <laughs> thanks for asking me mate i've enjoyed it and good luck to all the lads in the final tomorrow uh, well on saturday and sunday i think it'll the weather might not be so good, but I think you're going to have some good fishing. <laughs>